out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Be viewing out the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. Good day, precious saints, viewers. Welcome today to this program, The Outpouring. And uh, before we get into the meat of the program, I'd like us to spend a little time in just praising God and worshiping so that we will begin to quiet our spirits and our souls to receive the word of God that is going to come to you today. So whatever you're doing, you know, I encourage you to take a little time out and sit back, relax, uh, and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to engage your spirit so that you can be blessed and receive the Word of God that is coming to you. Today I'm going to be speaking about uh, obedience, uh, obedience to God, and also divine appointment. And we can't speak about obedience without speaking about Abraham because he, he was a great example of what it meant to walk in obedience to God, even though he had his moments of disobedience, but he, he came to that place where he walked in obedience to God. Father, I give you thanks today. God, I thank you for the opportunity, God, to be able to come into the homes, into the hearts, into the lives, into the situations of your precious people. Father, I pray today, God, that uh, all those who are listening will receive a blessing. God, that as your word goes forth, it will accomplish the thing for which it is sent to do. Father, we praise you, God. We exalt you, we glorify, and we magnify you. Father, we ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, that you settle our spirits. God, the busyness of the day, God, cause us to lay it aside and just come into your precious, sweet presence. Father, I pray, God, for all those who are viewing this program even now, God, that you will cause a peace and a quietness, God, to just descend upon them where their spirit man will be open to receive your word. Father, I thank you, God, that you have divine appointments for all those who are viewing the program today. Father, we thank you, God, that we dwell in a safe land. Father, we thank you that we have freedom of speech, God, where we can come on this radio, this TV station, God, and exalt your name and glorify you. Father, we declare today that you are the most high God that there is none to be compared to you. Father, we thank you that you sit high, God, and you look low, and the earth is your footstool. God, we exalt you, we magnify you, we glorify you. Father, we sound a high note of praise and adoration and worship because, God, truly you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the one that is called a wonderful counselor. You are the mighty God and the everlasting Father. Oh God, today, <clears throat> who shall we liken you unto God? And to whom shall you be compared? God, you reign in the affairs of men. Father, we thank you, God, that you are truly our Father. And we can call you Abba Father. God, you are a very present help in the times of trouble. Father, we worship you today because, God, we were created, God, to worship you. God, we worship and adore you. Father, we want to say that we love you. We thank you for the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. God, we thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit that is abiding in us, leading us, guiding us into all truth, into all wisdom. Father, we thank you for the angels that are on assignment even right now, to be the answers, God, to people's prayer. Oh, God, bless the audience, God. Bless all those who are viewing today. 
God, as you enter into their homes, into their lives, oh God, leave a blessing behind that there will be testimonies, God, and things will be changed and situations will turn around for your honor, for your glory, and for your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We will now go to Genesis. That's the first book in the Bible, Genesis chapter 17. And we're going to do some reading and then I will get into the exaltation. Genesis chapter 17. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, he was 99, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And this is a word for somebody. God is the almighty God. Walk before him and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. God doesn't add, you know, God, God's maths is multiplication. Yes, he adds, but he adds in a multiplying way. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying. So we see the position <coughs> that Abraham in the presence of God that he is adopting one of submission, one of worship, one of humility. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. <clears throat> and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between, betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man, child in your generation. And he that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is brought with money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that thou shalt be cut off from his people, and he sh had broken my covenant. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sari, their wife, thou shalt call her Siri, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her, and give her a son also of her, yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me that is a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, 
which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. <clears throat> and I want us to focus on that word. He's, God said at this set time in the next year. So there was an appointed time that God was going to do what he had to do. And he left off talking with the, him and God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son and all that were born in his house and all that were brought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day as God had said unto him. And we're going to stop here. This is verse 23. And I'm going to reread that verse, that last verse, verse 23. And Abraham took Ishmael his son and all that were born in his house and all that were brought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day as God had said unto him. Now, we see here the promptness of God. Abraham in his obedience to God. God gave him a word. God established a covenant with Abraham and he gave Abraham a directive. He said, this is what you have to do. And I want us to begin to think about this and use our imaginations and also understand what was happening here. God gave him this command about removing the foreskins from the penis of all the men in his household. And we know that Abraham had a large household. He had lots of servants. He had that son with Hagar. And his household was large. This was not a practice that was done before. This was something new that God wanted done. And Abraham, in the self-same day, he obeyed God. And picture with me what would have been happening. Here, Abraham, he, he, he did not give it any thought as to how this could be done, all the reasons why it cannot be done, who wouldn't want it to be done, the pain, the blood, the whole messy procedure, all his servants going to be kind of laid up for a, a few days because that, you know, that procedure will have them a little, you know, a little lame, a little quiet, but yet... Uh, Abraham obeyed God in the self same day. And my encouragement, not only to you, but to myself and to all who, you know, may be viewing this program today, when God speaks to you, obey in the self same day. Don't look for excuses and reasonings and and questionings why the thing that God said cannot be done. When we do not obey promptly, that amounts to disobedience. Because in other words, we're going to do it in our own time when we're ready and when we feel like it. But if God has given a directive, we can truly honor God and worship God by obeying God in the self-same day. And another thing I would like to bring up about uh, obedience to God, and this doesn't mean that we ought not to question, but sometimes we could get into a line of questioning, and that is to create delay and to, you know, it's a subtle way of not wanting to do it, and it's a subtle way of opposing. And God wants us to obey him in such a way that, we don't question his wisdom. We don't question his directives. We don't question his, his, his truth. But we are just quick and willing to walk in obedience. And I'm not saying that we ought not to sometimes, you know, have a nice discussion with God or get greater understanding. But God wants us to trust him. We ought to know that we have a loving father. And this loving father, if we ask him for a bread that he's not going to give us a stone, or if we ask him for a fish, he's not going to give us a scorpion. 
we got to so trust God that even though at times we do not understand the direction in which God is leading us or the command that he has given us, why to do it or all of that, we love God so much and trust him that our obedience will be unquestioning and our obedience to God will be prompt. So my encouragement to you today, whatever God has said to you to do, do it. We know that first account with Jesus, first miracle in the, um, at the wedding feast in Canaan where his mother said to the servants, whatsoever he says to you, do it. It did not make sense. Imagine, get all these big jars and fill them with water. Wine ran out, water didn't run out. But he said, fill the jars with water. And the obedience and the prompt, unquestioning obedience was what brought the miracle. So you may be believing God today for a miracle, for a breakthrough, for something to happen in a certain area of your life. My encouragement to you today is to walk in obedience. Whatsoever God says to you to do, do it. And do it promptly. Do it without questioning or without reproach or without delay. And watch and see how God will bring that breakthrough in your life. And um, we will now talk a little bit about the set time and God's appointed time. We saw in one of the earlier verses, verse 21, where the word of God says, and for those who may have, you know, just joined us, we're reading from Genesis chapter 17, and we're talking today about, uh, we're ministering on the word of God about obedience being prompt without question, and also God's appointed time, God's set time for things to happen. Verse 21 says, But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, with, uh, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And the word of God is filled with accounts of things happening at a set and at a pointed time. And if we were to be truthful and look back in our lives, we would realize that with us, God also works with set times and appointed time. You know, you may be talking to someone or you're walking down the road and you meet someone and they may say, oh, look, you know, I was just thinking about you. Or it may happen on the reverse. And these have to do with set times. And some for the unbelief or the ungodly they may say well that's coincidence but with god no coincidence it's divine appointments and is god's set time um i'll now share with you some accounts of things that happen in that precise moment and jonah is really a good example of that when at the exact time that the true Jonah overboard from the ship. What happened? There was a large fish right there waiting to swallow him up. That was a divine appointment. God had that fish in position for when Jonah was thrown off to catch him. Okay, that was no coincidence. That was God's divine appointment. And God is setting up divine appointments in your life, even right now as we speak. There are also a couple um, examples of divine appointments. When Eliezer, the servant of Isaac, was going to look for a wife for his, for his, um, his master's son, um, we know what happened. He prayed and he said, God, the person, you know, he was very specific. And, you know, at, in your convenience, you could go through it because it's in the account is given in the book of Genesis. And he said to God, he said, she must come and 
give me water and also offer to feed, my, to give water to my camels. And in no time at all, the woman came and everything that he requested was done. She said it word for word, just as he prayed that prayer. Now she, she did not hear that in advance, but that's how God operates. God operates with an exactness and with an appointed time. We have other examples of this where with uh, Saul, before Saul was appointed king, these donkeys, his father's donkeys got lost. And Saul left looking for his father's donkeys, but it really wasn't about the donkeys. There was a set time and there was a divine appointment that God had for Saul to meet with Samuel. So Saul, he left thinking that he was going to look for donkeys, but really and truly, he was coming in to an encounter with the prophet Saul and also for his anointing and for his kingship and rulership to start. God has appointments for all of you. God, God is in the business of set times, divine appointments. And my prayer today is that you will enter into your divine appointments with God. And it's not going to be about the donkeys that are lost, but that you will be so discerning that you will know this is the hand of God working a work to set me up, to bring me into my divine appointment. And don't curse the donkeys when they get lost. Just go through the process because God is working a work. We also see with Abraham when God said to him about sacrificing his son Isaac, his only son, and he walked in obedience to God. And as he was just about, the knife was in his hand and he was just about to, you know, to pierce his son. When the angel, at that exact time, the angel stopped him. And while his obedience was being fulfilled, God had this ram in position at the same time, caught in the tickets. And that, lamb, that ram was going to be used as the sacrifice. So my encouragement to you today with this word is look for your appointments. Look out for your set times. For some of you, you have been believing God for different things. You have been trusting God. You have been praying. There is a divine appointment. There is a set time that God has ordained for your breakthrough. When, he, when the angel said to the angel of the Lord said to Sarah that at this time next year, God was not slack concerning his promises because at that time, the following year, Sarah gave birth to a son and they called his name Isaac. Open your spirits and open your hearts for the set time and your divine appointments. Joseph is another great example of that. Just as his brothers, you know, they had thrown him in the pit, they wanted to kill him. God had a divine appointment appointment for Joseph. At that same time, these Midianites were passing and they took Joseph and they sold him. They could have sold him anywhere else, but they sold him into Egypt because there was a plan and there was a purpose for Joseph's life. And even though it seems as if things are going wrong, be encouraged. God has a divine appointment and a set time for your blessing. As we begin to close, we cannot talk about set times and divine appointments without talking a little bit about Elijah. And in 2 Kings chapter 7, then Elijah said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And as we continue, you know, in your own time, it's 2 Kings chapter 7. As you continue that reading, you would realize that at the set time the next day, just as the man of God prophesied 
this thing came to pass it happened there were four lepers in position and there was a whole host of events that happened but as the man of god prophesied in 24 hours the miracle happened and i prophesy to you today for some of you who are viewing this program your set time may be 24 hours after this time your set time may be a week your set time may be three months your set time may be next year at this point in time but know this of a certain thing that god will bring it to pass and god is not slack concerning his promises and then there is another account with um with elijah where there was this woman and uh, there was a famine in the land uh, and the woman you know we know of the account where her son died and he brought back the son to life and uh, she had to leave the place because there was a famine and uh, one day the king was there and he was asking his servant Gehazi to tell him some of the things, some of the great things that Elisha would have done. And while the king is speaking to Gehazi's servant and Gehazi is talking about this woman who Elisha brought her son back to life, at that same time in walked the woman to plead to the king on behalf of getting back her property because the famine had passed and she now wanted to regain her property. And at the same time that Gehazi was speaking about that account, in walked the woman and the king granted her her property, you know. So saints, viewers, you know, I want to really encourage you Believe God, walk in obedience to God, prompt obedience when God says it, do it without questioning. You may not always understand it, but walk in obedience to God and position yourself for the divine appointments that God has planned for your life. And I want to repeat some of you, your divine appointments will be tomorrow at this same time. For some of you, your divine appointments may be next at this self same time. Look for divine appointments. Look for the miracles. Walk in obedience. And God is not slack concerning his promises. If God says it, then God will do it. God has a great plan for your life. Do not shoot yourself in the foot. But walk in obedience with God and position yourself for the blessings of God. Look for it in the self-same day for your obedience without question and your divine appointments this time tomorrow, this time next week, this time next year. Whenever it comes, it's going to be yours. So, Father, bless all those who are listening. God, give them divine appointments. God, cause them to testify of your goodness and of your greatness and of your miracle working power. In Jesus' name, amen. Viewers, I'm all out of time. I want to encourage you to continue reading these accounts in the Bible. It will build your faith. Look for your set times and your divine appointments and walk in obedience to God. Shalom. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour